As you all probably know, I liked Resident Evil 4. I own it on pretty much every platform, and there was once a time where I considered buying a Zebo. I think it's one of the greatest games ever made, and when I first played the Mercenaries 3D on 3DS, a great desire filled inside me. I want a portable version of Resident Evil 4, goddammit! The years went by, and neither the 3DS nor the Vita would grant my wish. And now, fast forward a few years, and here we are. My wish has come true. One of my favourite games, here on a portable. So why aren't I satisfied? When the game was first announced and they gave us pricing details, I said, Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. Because I'm a fool who just wants a portable Resident Evil 4. And Resident Evil 4 on Switch is exactly that. They've taken the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 ports, and seemingly all they've done is change the button prompts. That's right, there's nothing else new here. No gyro like the Revelations games had. No HD rumble like Okami had. This is a by-the-numbers, super safe port. So why is it double the price of other versions? Is it portability? Because that's a feature of the Switch, not the game. So while I'm still having a blast playing this game on the small screen, I feel like there should have been more. To say I'm disappointed would be selling it short, because I thought this could be the definitive version of the game, and that's arguably still the Wii version. On Wii you get super precise motion controls, the original control scheme, and a more faithful art style. Frankly, the cleaner look and adjusted colours of the HD version harm the vibe. I think the lighting looks better on GameCube and Wii. The PC version actually gives you the option between HD textures and original textures. That option wasn't present on Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and it's also absent here on Switch. Right down to the icon, this is the PlayStation 4 version. That means the accelerated aiming glitch is still here too, so whenever you shoot an explosive, your aiming goes crazy like this. This isn't meant to happen, and it doesn't reset until you shoot another explosive. How's that in there? And how is it still in there? If all you want is a portable version of Resident Evil 4, then this is that. And it is a good version of the game. Not without its flaws, but it's certainly not the worst. It still runs at 60fps, which makes everything feel a lot smoother, although the beautiful reload animations now look a bit jarring being stuck at 30fps. I mean, look at this. Also, the HD clarity brings out elements that were meant to be masked in the original lower resolution. Like these super low poly models in the village sequence. You're never really meant to see these. On the flip side though, it does emphasize some of the better elements. Like I never noticed that the castle was visible in the background while being in the village. So it can highlight some welcome details too. What this version does, it does well enough, and it still delivers one of the most well-paced and expertly executed games of all time. If you've not played it before, then go! Do it now! But it is hard to shake the feeling that they could have done so much more, and for that reason it's hard to suggest buying it on Switch. Resident Evil 4 is a game rooted in its limitations, which is part of the reason it hasn't aged, and I'm not sure it ever will. It pioneered third-person aiming, but unlike its successors, Leon can't move and shoot at the same time, so you always need to be aware of your space and make conscious decisions to sacrifice movement for firepower. The reason this hasn't aged is because enemies are grounded by the same rules. They'll run at you from afar, but hobble when they're close. Every aspect of the game is designed in this manner. It's almost 15 years later, and it's still as elegant as ever. So while games like Gears of War may be starting to show a few cracks in their skin, Leon has the elixir for everlasting youth. There's very little to criticise with the game itself. It's an all-killer, no-thriller ride where every portion is memorable. The fight against El Gigante? The prison? The garden? Left hand? Where's everyone going, bingo? I can spend all day listing parts of the game because it's all just that good. Every member of Game Explained loves Resident Evil 4. It's even Andre's dad's favourite game. And that's why it's so heartbreaking that Capcom didn't roll out the red carpet for this one. I get not making changes for Remake and Zero because what more can you really do for those games? But other Switch games and other Capcom games have already set standards for expectations. And Resident Evil 4 deserves more than a quick and dirty port of an already flawed version. Heck, even the sound isn't quite right with jarring track changes with no transitions. Background effects that are too loud, for instance you can hear the dog way earlier than you're meant to, and sometimes low quality 3D sound. Listen to the grunts here. All this and the game comes in at a meaty 12 gigabytes. That's 3 gigabytes larger than the PlayStation 4 version. There's things I just can't fathom about this port. It's a letdown. But with all that said, it's hard to say don't play it, because this is a portable version of Resident Evil 4, and it delivers on that front. Though I had a constant badgering in the back of my head that this should have been something more, I was still having a blast playing one of the all-time greats in the palm of my hands. If you were happy enough with the PlayStation 4 version, then you'll be happy enough here too. Though the in-game achievements are a bit more obtrusive here on the Switch, because the Switch doesn't have native achievements. So achievements that made sense on PlayStation 4 are very redundant on Switch. Yes I know I killed El Gigante, I can see his giant body! In fact, there's only three achievements that aren't tied to progression, and they're still kinda tied to progression. 
I suppose it's a good thing that they're here in any form, but man, I wish there was a way to disable them. They clearly weren't tailored for a system that doesn't have achievements. It just kind of feels pointless. Giving this game a rating is super tough, because even with all my problems and issues with things they didn't do, it still ended up being some of the most fun I've had on the Switch, because this is one of the most enjoyable games out there. So take this rating under the context that I'm a huge fan of this game, but expected more from this version. I simply liked Resident Evil 4 on Switch. In another timeline, perhaps I would have said it was mind-blowing. I frankly think Resident Evil 4 deserves that rating, but for Capcom to not include the other bells and whistles from their other Switch ports and charge a significantly higher price is rather inexcusable, especially when the version they're basing the port on already has its share of problems. At least you can play it with a GameCube controller, though I'm sure that's just a happy accident. Resident Evil 4 is still Resident Evil 4, but maybe your money is best off with another version. Alright, with that said, thanks so much for watching, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for a lot more on Resident Evil and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye.